Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you In Old Chicago, starring Dorothy Lamour, Robert Young, and John Hodiak. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In 1840, two Englishmen traveling in America tried to find the city of Chicago. They heard it was somewhere in the Middle West, but they couldn't find a map that recognized its existence. How they made out finally, I don't know. But the story indicates how fast and furious was the growth of this spectacular, dynamic city. Tonight in the Lux Radio Theater, we bring you a dramatic episode from the pageant of Chicago. A story of the city's violent birth and struggle for existence, of love and treachery and sacrifice, and of America's undying faith in the future. It's the 20th Century Fox success in old Chicago. And our stars are as promising as our play. Robert Young, Dorothy L'Amour, and John Hodiak. If you saw the picture, you may have been impressed, as I was, by the careful attention to each historical detail from the dollar-studded floor of the Palmer House to the bar of soap in Molly O'Leary's wash tub. And notice, I say, bar of soap. Soap flakes, like Lux, were still a long way in the future. According to early Chicago methods, you boiled your clothes and scrubbed them with a cake of soap to get them clean. And when you got through, you didn't have a shirt, you had a handkerchief with sleeves. I think you'll agree that the modern luxury of using Lux Flakes is as far removed from that grisly experience as present-day Chicago is from the muddy village of 1834. Ten years ago, Chicago celebrated its 100th anniversary, a century of progress. And at the same time, the Lux Radio Theater started its first season on the air. As you know, next Monday night is our 10th anniversary. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank personally all those radio stations from coast to coast that have written me such heartwarming letters of congratulation. It's certainly satisfying to know that the Lux Radio Theater has so many friends in the broadcasting industry as well as among the listening public. We asked you to help us select our 10th anniversary play for next week. And later tonight, I'll tell you the play and stars we've chosen. But now it's curtain time. And here's the first act of In Old Chicago. Starring Robert Young as Dion, Dorothy L'Amour as Belle, and John Hodiak as Jack. In 1854, on a desolate sweep of Illinois prairie land, a woman and three young boys are gathered around the prone figure of a dying man. Oh, Pat. Pat. You sure you're all right? And the young one? Yes, not a scratch. Praise heaven. What a way to die. Dragged to my death by my own horses. It was a train that scared them. Dragged to my death just when the smell of Chicago's in my nose. Molly, the boys. They're here, Pat. Here. Jack Lett. Diane. Bob. Father. Papa. Now, mind what I say, boys. You'll be wasting yourself, Pat. Please rest. Breath? It's my last breath I'm using, girl. And I'll have my say. Boys, it is a grand new place, this Chicago. And them that grow with it will be rich and strong, like I always minded to be. Someday, to be fine, big men. A credit to me and my name. And everybody's speaking with respect to the O'Leary's and how they grew up with the city and put their mark upon it. You hear me, lads? Yes, yes Father. Father. Thank you. And Molly, just bury me here and let Chicago come to me that couldn't come to it. Molly, Pat, Pat. Fifteen years later, and the Chicago that Pat O'Leary never lived to see is a raucous, roaring new metropolis, a 
place of easy money and easy ways. Open night and day to newcomers from all over the world. A fighting, laughing, sprawling city in which O'Leary's wife and three sons have found their place. A place behind a sign which reads, Mrs. Molly O'Leary's French Laundry. What? Hey, Ma, I'm back. What time? Supper's ready. I've got three bundles of wash from Gil Warner and two from Mrs. Palmer, and she says to tell you what you call them are missing. Oh, she did. Well, you can tell a fine lady she'll get them back when she pays for the soap she owes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Now go feed your horse and then come back and feed yourself. Ma! Oh, Ma! In here, Jack. Well, I'm back. Are you now? You should have been at the courthouse, Ma. I sure made him sit up today and take notice. Fine, boy, fine. You know what I told him? My client is right, I said, and you all know it. But who cares about fair play and justice these days, I said. No wonder people call Chicago the worst city in the country, I said, with politicians like Gil Warner running things. And how did a fine gentleman like that? Oh, he was sweating plenty. Yes, so was I, all day. Now, help me carry this wash basket inside. Oh, sure, Ma. And then I said, but it takes more than money in politics to make a great city. It's going to take people with some sense of decency to make Chicago not only the biggest city in the world, but the best. Set it down. Oh, it is a fine silver tongue you have, Lawyer O'Leary, and your father'd be that proud of you. And I told... Hey, Ma, look. Huh? Outside, it's a police wagon. And your brother, Dion. Dion, get in here. I'm home, Ma. A lovely day, Mrs. O'Leary. Thanks for the ride, Jim. Anytime, Dion. Always got room for you. Yep. And what's the mud on your shoes? Hello, Ma. Jack. Hi. Coming home in the police wagon. Sorry you lost your case, Jack. Lost? You lost your case? Oh, I forgot to tell you, Ma. Judge dismissed it. But I thought you won it. Everybody's talking about you downtown. Said you had the whole courtroom hypnotized. Everybody but Judge Bender. I'd have had him, too, except it was Gil Warner who made him judge. Well, supper's ready. Go to both of you and then call in your brother and Gretchen. Well, they're not interested in eating. Ma married six months and still in love. Now get cleaned up. Ma, when are you going to quit this laundry business? And why should I be quitting? Because I don't want my best girl looking at a wash tub all her life. Oh. I'll get you a new house. Not mm-hmm. here in the patch, either. I'll set you up like the finest lady in town. Look, Ma. Dyer, all that money, where did you get it? Well, there were eight horses in the race. Mine and seven others. All we had to do was shoot the seven others. Again. And I've told you a hundred times I'll not be living on money that isn't honestly got. All right, but give us a kiss then, huh? It's the back of my hand you'll get. Oh, come on, come on. Guy up. Now, stop it. A kiss, I said. Come on. There. Now get along with you. (laughs) Come along, girl. Oh, I was just starting a new wash. Look, look, this tablecloth. It's Gil Warner's. Yeah. I will not wash tablecloths that Gil Warner's been using to draw pictures on. Back it goes. Hello, Gretchen. Hello, Dion. Hey, wait a minute. This drawing, it's a map. Hmm? He's drawn a map on a tablecloth. Hmm. And look, something about Randolph Street. Let me see it. Yeah, Randolph and Madison. And these lines here, they look like the tracks for the horse car line. Hey, you know what this means? It means they're going to run the new car line on Randolph Street. Oh, you're crazy. They've already surveyed Madison Street. Sure they have. That's exactly what makes me so sure the car line will be on Randolph. You know, maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. Warner gets people to invest on Madison Street, and then he switches the line to a street where he owns the property. If you are right, this tablecloth is worth a fortune. And I'm going to get part of it. You with your big talk, and not a penny honestly earned your name. If I had this corner right here... We're all a traffic cross. I'd put up the biggest saloon in Chicago. Saloon? Three beers to you, Mrs. O'Leary. I wouldn't be setting my foot within a mile of it. You're too late, Dion. Hmm? Look, there's a name scribbled on that corner already. B F A W C T. Fawcett. Oh. You ever hear of him? No, new to me. Ma, sorry I can't stay for supper, but I've got an idea. You will stay for supper. Easy now, sweetheart. This is big business. The men. Where are you going? Down to the hub. Another saloon. Gil Warner's saloon. That's right. I'm calling on Gil Warner, and I'm going to find out about this fellow, B. Fawcett. I'll see you later. Well, uh, good evening, Mr. Warner. Hello, Diane. Glad to see you. I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Warner. Oh? It's kind of private. I thought maybe we could... Uh, well, uh, not just now, son. Anyway, I think you'd rather look at who's coming out there on the stage than waste time talking to me, Sage. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Mr. Gil Warner, presents the singing sensation from New York City, Miss Belle Fawcett. Belle Fawcett, huh? B. Fawcett. That's right. Uh, she new here? Yeah. She was the biggest hit in the Garden in New York ever had. What do you think of her? What a woman. Yeah, that's right. What a woman. You that pleases the eye Makes me fly I wonder why I've known forever with me For it seems You've shown up in all of my dreams All my dreams But now I'm a 
I've got to see her. Well, you can see her when Mr. Warner tells me okay, so go away. Sorry to do this. Miss Fawcett. Miss Bell, we've been busting on. Will you get out of here? Please, I have to see you, Miss Fawcett. Are you crazy? I guess so. I was sane enough until I saw you, and then something happened to me. I've never felt this way before. I'll never feel this way again. I'll go get Miss Wong. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? I'm in love with you. Give me just ten minutes. Five minutes. Miss Bell, you want I to scream for you? Nobody has to scream. Oh, I know I sound crazy, and I apologize, but it's true. I'm shaking all over, and I want to be calm and cool so I can make you understand. Hattie, go inside. Yes, sir. But I ain't exactly content about it. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Diane O'Leary. You never heard of me, but what does that matter? It matters a lot when someone comes breaking in. Well, I had to talk to you alone. All right. Let's go downstairs and have some supper. Oh, no, not here. It's too crowded. I figured you might prefer taking me to your place. All right. I will. What? But your story had better be good. Hattie? Ma'am? Get us a carriage. Yes, ma'am. It's that house on the right, driver. Oh, oh no, the next one. Oh, next one, driver. Yes, sir. There, the one with the horse trough in front. Horse trough, hmm? Well, that should help me find it next time. I'm sure it will. Here you are, driver. So this is where you live. Mm-hmm. Way up there on the second floor, see? Oh, up there on the corner, hmm? That's right. The house with the horse. Oh, no. Hey! Driver, quick, take me back to the hub. Yes, ma'am. Hey, wait! Wait! <laughs> yes, sir. What a woman. <laughs> Seems like a lark, not a better figure in Chicago. Excepting Mrs. Molly O'Leary. So, you're in love at last. Love? Well, sure, I'm in love with you. And I suppose it's for me you're slicking down your hair and staring at yourself in the mirror. To, uh, just as I thought. That shirt, take it off. Oh, but my, just bored us in that pile in the kitchen. It's a beaut. Say, who do these embroidered initials stand for? DVS. His name is Swift. He sells pigs and he gets his shirt in the morning. Now off with it. Oh, but Ma, look how it fits. Like it was made for me. Take it off or I'll brain you. I'll wear the shirt tonight. You brain me in the morning. I'm warning you, Diane O'Leary. I... Ma! Up here, Jack. Ma, I won it. I've won my first case. Jack! The judge said it was the best speech he's heard all this session and so did the lawyer from the other side. Well, Ma, there's one of us you can be proud of. And a fellow from the Tribune said he was going to write it up. Jack, lad, your name in the paper. Oh, glory be. How much did you get? What kind of a fee? Oh, well, uh... You see, my client only makes $10 a week, and he's got seven kids. $10 a week? That's ten more than you make. Diane, I couldn't take his money, could I, Ma? I give up. I've got one son that steals my laundry, and another a lawyer who never gets paid. I should have brought the two yob of you up as good Irish bricklayers, and every Saturday an envelope with some money in it. I'll have you out of the patch yet, and servants waiting on you. And don't sit up for me tonight. I may be late. Oh, poosh. Oh, poosh indeed. <laughs> That you, Miss Bell? Any messages? Well, none except a heap more roses and bottle stuff. Lord, honey, you sure got that man snorting in his sleep. Well, I hope you threw them out. Oh, but the champagne, Miss Bell. You know what a mess busted bottles make. And you told him not to come around here anymore. I told him and told him till I was black in the face. <laughs> Good. Oh, this dress, I can hardly breathe. Well, long as men like the small ways us gals got to suffer. <laughs> You won't miss anything? No. I'll be going to the hub in a little while, but I won't need you, Hattie. Good night. Oh, good night, Miss Bell. Hello? You. Wait. Get out of now, here. Bell, look. Get got... out. Hattie? Ma'am? Help, please. Help! Minor! We've been minor! Police! Police! What do you mean by breaking in here? I didn't break in. All I did was lie to your landlord. Told him I was your brother. Wanted to surprise you. He sneaked me in the back way. You'll go to jail the front way. All I want is to talk to you. But before I want to talk, I want to kiss. 
One kiss. Let go of me. Oh, you, you... Oh, Patty! That was wonderful. Thank you. Now then, you own a piece of property on Randolph Street. Well, of all the... And I thought that if you and I were to build a place like Gil Warner's, like the hub, only with more class, we could make a lot of money. Oh. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? I'm always interested in the business deals. You are? Of course I am. What a woman. I'm also crazy about you. And, uh, I'm sorry. Well, that's better. I mean, I'm sorry, but I think I've got to have another kiss. Well, you... You... Oh, right in there, also, right in there. Uh-oh. Mama, look at that. Hey, I thought you said there was murder going on. Sorry, boss. Ain't I the one? Now, here's the idea. First of all, Gil Warner's going to be awfully sore. That means we've got to get backing and protection. The police commissioner and Senator Colby. So, get your hat, Bell. You and I have got a couple of business calls to make. So far, so good. Now, here's the proposition, Commissioner. I'm listening. Full protection for Miss Fawcett and me. And for you and your little ones. One hundred dollars in cash every Saturday from now on. Are you trying to bribe me, O'Leary? Why, Commissioner, how can you mention such a word? <laughs> well, now that we're alone, Senator, Mr. O'Leary has something that I think will interest you. Indeed. I've heard tell of you, O'Leary. I understand you exert some influence in the patch. Only a little, Senator. Gil Warner controls the patch and all its votes. You need votes, and as long as Warner gets along with no opposition, he has you in the machine just where he wants you. <laughs> But uh, who knows? The day may come when Warner will get other ideas. Ideas that may be embarrassing. And so we have an offer to make. Miss Fawcett here is the greatest attraction that ever came to Chicago. Indubitably, my dear. Now, with your backing and your money to get us started, Belle and I will open Chicago's best cafe on the busiest corner in town. Once we have that, I promise you I'll get control of the patch. Well. And as soon as we're operating, a package will come to your home once a month. In it, there'll be a $110 bill. Well... No, Senator, not well. Are you in or not? I'm always in the market for uh, marketable commodities. I'll have a check for you in the morning. Thank you. We'll meet again, Senator. Goodbye, Senator. Goodbye. You're the strangest man I've ever known, Diane. Nothing strange about me. I've just got ambition. Yes. Good luck, partner. Good luck, partner. <laughs> Our stars, Robert Young, Dorothy Lamour, and John Hodiak will be back in just a moment for Act Two of In Old Chicago. Sally, what on earth? With all those packages, you look like Santa Claus. Well, I am. Three months ahead of time? Mm, for you, maybe, but not for the girls and boys overseas. Oh, of course. October 15th is the deadline for mailing Christmas gifts overseas, and that means for wax and army nurses, too. What are you sending? Slips for the girls over there. All in dread? I should say not. Look, aren't they pretty? This tea rose one with the luscious lace at the bottom is a honey. And the wax like frivolous undies? You bet they love them. The lacier, the better. And no matter where they are, it's easy to find Lux to take care of them. The PXs do a terrific sale on Lux plates. Yeah, but what do the wax do about hot water? Mr. Kennedy, I'm surprised at you. Well, they don't need it. You never use hot water on rayon undies. Why, you could ruin the color. Luke Warm Lux Suds do a perfectly swell job, and undies stay lovely lots longer that way. Three times longer, isn't it? Well, that's exactly what Tess showed. You should see the slips they tested. The difference is simply amazing. Handling a slip roughly and using strong soaps and hot water makes the color fade much too soon. The very same kinds of slips wash the Lux way. Why, you could hardly tell them from you. So keep your slips new looking longer the gentle Lux way. Now... Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of In Old Chicago, starring Dorothy Lamour as Belle, Robert Young as Diane, and John Hodiak as Jack. A year has passed, and Molly O'Leary is still at her washtub and ironing board. But for her three sons, there have been many changes. Bob the youngest is a brand new father. Jack is no richer than he was. But his courage as a lawyer is spreading his pain throughout Chicago. And Diane, plunging into the greatest gamble of his life, is about to reap the rewards. The lavish cafe which he and Belle Fawcett have built has just opened its mahogany doors. 
And among the multitude of first night guests is the politician, Gil Warner. Come into the office, Gil. Here, I hope you don't mind my pulling you away from all those friends of yours, son. My, Jim Dandy Place, you've got Diane. Shall I uh, close the door? Eh, maybe that would be a good idea. Yes, sir, I'm proud of you. You're being too nice, Warner. I'm <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> I'm not sore, Diane. Live and let live, I say. And uh, how's Belle? I don't blame you for taking Belle away from me. Great girl. I'd have married Belle if I'd had the chance. Do you know that? Come on, come on. What's on your mind? What's on my mind? <laughs> Son, I'm thinking of running for mayor. You see, I've been electing mayors so long, I figure I'd like to elect myself. Well, where do I come in? I'm telling you where. Now, if I wanted to, I could give you a lot of trouble, boy. Build a cafe even bigger than this one. But I don't want to fight. And if you say the word, I'll even close the hub. Give Belle and me an open field, huh? This is a nice place, son, but a tinderbox. Touch a match to it accidentally, and it'll go off like a Roman candle. But uh, pulling together, there's plenty of room here for you and Belle and me. Well, it sounds fine, Warner, but naturally there's a little expense involved. And right now, with the well, opening uh, and all... I, I took the liberty of bringing along my check for $10,000. There'll be more between now and election time. As I was saying, I think things will work out very nicely, Your Honor. <laughs> yes. Yes, you're a smart boy, Diane. Nice and smart. Uh, now, how about my saying good evening to Belle, huh? Why, she'd be sore if you didn't. We'll see her backstage. She's singing in a couple of minutes. Belle. Hello, Gil. I'm so glad you came. You know, Diane, I always said she was the best looker Chicago ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, but I also sing. I uh, just want you to know that I'm going to get you back if I can. But uh, it looks as though it won't be to the hub. Gil's closing the hub, Belle. For good. But why? Oh, you better get out there. That's your music. Yes, but... I'll tell you about it later. I'll never let you cry over me. You never know how nice I can be. I'll never tell you how much I'm in love. Crazy closing a hub. We just talked a few things over in the office. Let's go back and I'll tell you all about it. Well, what about an encore? I'll let him wait. This is more important. And you're taking this check, Diane? You're taking your $10,000? Well, the check's good, isn't it? Well, you know very well how Gil feels about us. Ever since I left his place, he's been boiling. And now you want to help him get even. Don't you know what he can do to us if he's mayor? What makes you think he's going to be mayor? Look, if necessary, I'll even vote for Warner myself. But I've said nothing about how the patch will vote. But that's... Politics. Gil would knife me if he could, and I simply mean to beat him to it. <laughs> you dirty dog. Oh, but you love me. Certainly not. Come on, say it before I... Of course I love you. That's better. I've got all the world, Belle. You and this place and Warner on the run and... Yeah? It's Jack. Can I come in? Jack? Well, don't look so surprised. We may not agree in politics, but you don't think I'd miss your opening, do you? Thanks. Oh, Bell. Well, you're finally meeting him, my brother Jack. It's about time. It certainly is. And now, Dion isn't the only member of the family who thinks you're beautiful. Hey, now, take it easy. <laughs> well, Dion, got licked in court again today. So I heard. One of your boys, Mitch Stacy. He was guilty, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Got away, though. I give you credit, you're awfully slick. What's all this about? It's simple, Belle. I've been made a special prosecutor. 
With election coming up, I've been trying to crack down on all those phony votes in the patch. Mitch was dumb enough to be caught registering for the third time under another different name. And naturally, I put a witness on the stand who knew Mitch. She testified beautifully. And then uh, Dion's lawyer made a mucky out of me. I shouldn't think that would be easy. Oh, so easy. This woman, my witness, was married to Mitch years ago. They never got a divorce. And when Jack wound up his case, all we had to do was remind the judge that a wife can't testify against her husband. So I lost. But someday, Dion, I'll start winning my cases. That's the way to talk. Strange, isn't it, Bell? Dion on one side and me on the other, fighting each other. Say, uh, look, Bell, why don't you let Dion bring you up to the house sometime? You really ought to meet Ma. I'd love to. And do one more thing for me. Keep an eye on this fella. He's getting up in the world so fast it might go to his head. And I'd kind of hate to have to knock it off. I'll try. Well, I've got some work to do. Oh, but we're going to have a party. I hope to, too. A reform party. See you soon. Goodbye, Jack. Bye. Oh, he's swell, Diane. Don't make him any better. That was nice of him wanting me to meet your mother. I've been thinking about that myself. Don't. I understand how she feels about me. Oh, Ma's all right. A little old-fashioned, maybe. Like Jack. He's real, Diane. He believes everything he says. Can you imagine the Jack, the mayor Jack would make if he had half a chance? Well, he could have had half a chance if he hadn't mixed up with that reform crowd. With my help, he... Wait a minute. I've got an idea. What? I just figured out how to spend Gil Warner's check. <laughs> Honey, this is the best yet. Come on, I've got to see some of the boys. <laughs> Gentlemen! Gentlemen, I agree with everything you've said, but I still don't understand. This delegation, what is it you want me to do? We canvass the field thoroughly, Mr. O'Leary. You're the man we want to run for mayor. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. But I don't know you. I don't even know who you represent. The respectable people of Chicago, the people who want an honest city. And that's why we've organized this reform party. It's a great opportunity for you. Well, you've got a chance to carry every district, except perhaps Gil Warner's patch. But your brother's influential there, Mr. O'Leary. Surely he'll support you. I'm afraid we can't count on my brother. We O'Learys are a strange tribe. Well, you do it, Mr. O'Leary. Chicago needs you. Right. Right. Thank you need. Thanks. I'll do it. We may not win, but we'll put up a fight they won't forget. Yes, I'll run for mayor. That's it. Right. 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 What answer did he give you? Well, his answer was yes. Your brother's going to run. Good. Great. And uh, when you suggested that I'd support him? Well, he said he was afraid we couldn't count on you. Well, at least he's agreed to run. That's the first step. Well, what worries me, boss, is can you control him once he's in? He's a pretty stubborn Irishman. You leave that to me. We O'Leary's are a strange tribe. <laughs> Funny, he said the very same word. <laughs> This is the first time you've been to my office? Ah, uh -uh, third time. But since you made up your mind to be our next mayor, you're never here. <laughs> well, how's it going? Uh, a month ago, I thought I might have a chance. Now I don't know, and the time's getting close. Yeah, and I want to help you. Help you? Why not? Of course, I couldn't support you openly. You know how I feel about the patch. Of course. No strings attached. And the fact you're my brother isn't going to mean a thing. Oh, stop arguing, will you? If you stood in the way of something I felt should be done, I'd go after you as fast as anyone else. I'm in dead earnest, Dion. I've got great hopes for Chicago, and that means wiping out the patch. Jack, I don't need a speech. Save it for your rally tonight. <laughs> I just wanted to be sure you know exactly how I stand. And now that that's over, how about lunch? Fine. Incidentally, why don't you get Bell and come over to the house tonight and take Ma for a drive? Because you know Ma. Oh, we'll get a couple of beers under her belt. Bell's grand. We've got to make Ma meet her. Okay, but heaven help us if it doesn't work out. Gee, that was good, Ma. You're still the best cook in Chicago. Here, uh, have some more beer. Well, a drop, perhaps. Thank you, lad. You know, Diane, you should bring Belle home for dinner sometime. What's that? I've met her, Ma. I think she's fine. I'll meet no girl that's the talk of the town and her kicking her heels in the air for anyone to see. Oh, when you were a little one, Diane, and me over a tub, I used to dream of the day when you'd bring me home a sweet one and her all blushes and present me with fine grandsons as would be like some of my own, only better... Well, Ma, it's my own life. Sure, it's that. Hey, Diane. Yes, Bob? Your carriage is here. Oh, thanks. Uh, look, Ma, why don't you finish your beer and then you and Diane go for a ride, huh? And why not you two? Because there's a rally in the armory. Oh, and I forgot. And I'm supposed to speak. How about it, Ma? I'll do it. And back in time to go to the rally. Yeah, don't worry about the dishes. Stretch it and I'll do them. See? I'll get your coat and hat. Drink up, old lady. I've got a real surprise for you. Indeed. Mm, sure. Two of the 
fastest stepping mares you ever saw. Take you all over town. I prefer to see the lake. Okay, the lake. Oh, an elegant carriage, Dion. Elegant. Now, before you get in, just close your eyes. Keep them closed now. I'll open the door. Up one step. That's it. And there you are. Get going, Joe. Oh, and such lovely cushions. What's this? Joe, hello. Ma, this is Miss Fawcett. This is Belle. A trick. You tricked but me. But you're going to see a lot of belts, so you may as well get used to it. The devil I will. I'm getting out. Oh, stop being so stubborn. Stop the horses or I'll give you the licking of your life. I'll get out, Diane. You'll go along with her. Sit still, both of you. Keep going, Joel. Stop this contraption. Stop or I'll jump out. Sit down. Oh, wait till I get you alone, Dion O'Leary. I'll have a few things to say to her myself. Oh, you will, will you? I want it to be nice. I wanted you to like me. But that Irish lunkhead son of yours, what does he think he's doing to me? Well, please. So, my son's an Irish lunkhead. And how would you like to be treated? You with your grand manners. Like any girl who's going to be his wife has a right to be treated. Dion, I'll never marry you. Never. And now if you'll stop this thing, I'll be taking my leave. Ah. Pull up, Joe. Okay, boss. Never mind. I'll get out. You'll do no such. It's you he be saving the wear and tear of walking, not me. Ma, Ma, please. And a fine good night to you, I'm sure. Oh, how could you do this, Diane? Well, I didn't think Ma'd act like that. You'd better go get her, Diane, and take her to the rally. She shouldn't miss Jack's speech. When it's over, I'll meet you at the cafe. Yeah. I'm sorry, Belle. Forget it. Oh, we can handle. How did it go at the armory? The rally? Not much better than you and Ma in the carriage. Well, what happened? Oh, Warner had the place packed. They broke it up before Jack finished. Oh, that's awful. Jack's no politician. He'll never beat Warner. Never say never about politics. What are you up to now? What would happen if all Gil Warner's ward healers and poll watchers fail to show up three days from now? Fail to show up on election day? That's right. If that happened, Warner wouldn't stand much chance of winning, would he? That's why I'm having a little talk with the police commissioner. Well, you won't have to go far. He's waiting now up in your office. I know it. I told him he'd better be here when I got back. I can't do it, Dion. I can't throw them in jail. Why? Why, there's too many of them. Hundreds. Besides, Gil Warner's my friend. I'll be ruined. For doing your duty? They're crooked, the whole lot of them. Oh, come, Commissioner, be a man. Warner, kill me. Besides, what you're asking is against all my principles. You get $100 a week for doing what I tell you to do. None of that. Every cent was in cash. Oh, sure, but every week a different man brought it to you. Meaning exactly what? Meaning that I've got a dozen witnesses if you ever get any ideas that I don't like. Uh, what do you want me to do? On Monday night, the night before election, Gil Warner's giving the biggest party the Patch has ever seen. Plenty of free liquor and food. Everybody will be there. Then somehow a fight's going to start. Yes, yes, I see. I'll take care of that. Your job is to be standing by with every cop in Chicago. Because Gil Warner and all his boys are going to spend election day in jail. <laughs> Where's the commissioner? Gone to the sanitarium, Mr. Warner. Where? What sanitarium? Can't give out the address, sir. Doctor's orders. Where's Judge Bender, then? Get him in here. Judge Bender left on a hunting trip, sir. All the judges went on a hunting trip. They've organized a hunting club. Then Senator Colby. Get off that chair and find Colby. Yes, sir. Where do I come on your list, Gil? Dion. Oh, just the man. I'm tied hand and foot. Every man in this jail controls 20 votes. Enough to swing the election and not one of them at the polls. What am I going to do? You're going to stop squawking. What did you say? You're through, Gil. I've sold you out. Uh, Sergeant? Yes, sir? You can put Mr. Warner back in his cell. Hey, Sorry to rush off, Gil, but I've got a vote to cast for Jack O'Leary. Jack, I can't tell you how happy I am. Congratulations. I licked him, Bell. I licked the machine. You did that yesterday. Don't you believe it yet? No. Doesn't seem possible. Where's Dion? Oh, it's a little early yet. He'll be here soon. Bell, I'm here to plead for your help. I'm going to clean out the patch. This place, too? Yes. But all of Dion's money is tied up in a check. Mine, too. We have a long way to go before we get it back. That's why I'm here. To tell Dion if he doesn't see it my way, there's going to be trouble. He's a great person. 
He can go anywhere, do anything, if only he gets on the right track. Bell, I want to see him marry you, have a home and kids, start to live. Don't you think that's what I've been hoping for? Enough to help me now? Help you do what? Well, Diane couldn't stand a public investigation. You know how he operates. But if I can't bring him to his senses, that's what I'll have to do. I'd like to use you as the chief witness against him. Let you tell the whole story of how he's run things down here. How do you feel about that, Bell? I'm glad you're here, Diane. I just want you and Bell to understand my position. Thanks. I think we catch on. I told you this before the election. And I promised it to the people who made me mayor. I made you mayor, not the people. You? Sure. I sent that delegation to see you. I paid for the campaign, ran it, framed it, threw Warren and his gang into jail. Even voted for you myself. I don't believe it. It's true, Jack. Well, why did you do it? Oh, a lot of reasons. I wanted to see if I could. Or maybe it was because I wanted to see Ma's face when she rode with you down the avenue last night. All right, you elected me. But I'm mayor anyway. And I'm Chicago. I'd hate to have to kick you out. You'd better listen to him, Diane. What are you going to get out of this? Nothing. But I happen to have sense enough to see what Jack's after, even if you haven't. Okay. But if you've gone in for reform, Belle, I guess we won't be seeing much of each other. You're not walking out on Belle. Oh, no. She's the one who's walking out, Jack. Now, go ahead. Investigate. <laughs> Pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Before the curtain rises on Act Three of In Old Chicago... We go to a city humming with war industries. It's early in the morning at the small apartment of two girl war workers. Oh, oh dear, am I sleepy. Stop ringing. Oh, where is that darn clock? What's the matter, Sue? Oh, it's under the bed somewhere. I'll get it. Ow! There. I got a nice big bump on my head just for you, and... Oh, I ruined my last pair of stockings. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, it seems like every time I move, a stocking goes pop. Well, uh, I hate to say I told you so. Now, don't start telling me about luck. How about another pair of stockings? You're going to get them. From you? From me. And I'm going to wash them for you. Wash them in Lux. Yes, Lux Flakes. And if you don't avoid a lot of those runs, I'll eat my alarm clock. Did Susie have to eat her alarm clock? Here's Peg two weeks later. Say, kid. Yep. There's something in that Lux talk after all. Sure. Why, they say they made ever so many tests. Oh, forget about the test. Look at me. No runs for ages. That's what I mean. Those strain tests showed that Lux makes stockings last twice as long. It's like getting an extra pair every time you buy one. Sue is right. It certainly pays to use Lux flakes for your stockings, whether they are rayon, cotton, silk, or your last precious nylon. Rubbing with a cake of soap or using strong soap makes stockings go into runs ever so much faster. So here it is in rhyme. For extra wear from every pair, use safe Lux Care. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the play, you're all invited backstage to meet our stars in person. Now here's the third act of In Old Chicago, starring Robert Young as Diane O'Leary, John Hodiak as Jack, and Dorothy Lamour as Belle Fawcett who now relates our story. There was no choice open to Jack O'Leary. Whatever feeling he had for Diane or for me, he flung aside in his determination to blast every crooked element out of Chicago. Senator Colby fled to safety in Canada, and the next day Jack asked the grand jury for indictments against Gil Warner and Diane. His plans for me were different. I was to help him. But when the time grew close, the thought that my testimony would send Diane to prison was too much for me. Early one night, I slipped away to the railroad station. There was a train leaving for New York. Running away won't help you, Belle. Diane. It won't help Jack, either. But I can't tell them what I know, Diane. They'll send you to prison. That's not as bad as losing you. How did you know I was leaving? I still have a few friends among the police. They've been watching 
Diane, I... I'd better get on the train while I can. Just let me say one thing. Please, Diane. I, I don't ask you to forgive me. I guess I've said and done things you can't forgive, but you've got to believe this. I love you, Belle. I'll always love you. It's over, Diane. It has to be. You can't change in a moment any more than I can. I can't do without you, Belle, and in some strange way, I think maybe you need me, too. I want you to marry me. Now, tonight. Say yes, Belle, please. You know I will, don't you? I can't use reason against you, darling. I never could. Don't try. Oh, Belle. I know just the man to marry us. Jack, his first wedding. Oh, darling. Don't ever let me leave you again. Therefore, by the right of authority in me, tested by the state of Illinois, I pronounce you, Diane O'Leary, and you, Belle Fawcett, Lawfully married, husband and wife. Well, uh, it doesn't say so in the book, but I think a kiss comes next. Come here, Mrs. O'Leary. <laughs> I wouldn't take a million dollars for this moment. Hey, this makes us kissing kin, too, Belle. I wish your mother would say that. Oh, she will. While we're all here, there's just one other little matter I'd like to clear up. It'll keep. Not for long, it won't. Jack, uh, wife can't testify in court against her husband, can she? Diane. Do you still want Belle to appear tomorrow? Dirty rat. How could you, Diane? How could you? Well, now, wait a minute, honey. Our getting married's got nothing to do with the jam I'm in. Or was in. Don't lie anymore, Diane. Don't. I'm not lying. Marrying you is the best thing I ever did in my life. At least the shrewdest. Oh, don't say that. But if marrying you now could stop you from testifying, and if Jack was dumb enough not to see Get it... Get out of here. Get out. Come on, Belle. I'm not going, Diane. I said come on. Take your hands off her. Get it away, Jack, or I'll... I'm sorry, Belle. I'll take you home. Jack left me at my hotel. I was dazed. Tears didn't help nor calling myself every kind of a fool. How could I believe that Diane said? And yet, how could I not believe him? There always are men like Diane and always women like me. He could do anything in the world to me, I think, and... And I still would love him. But as I thought what next to do, something was happening at the O'Leary home that changed all our lives. Ma, Ma, where are you? We're in the barn, feeding a cow. Oh, come, Schnell, Ma. Oh, stop that heathen jabbering and talk French. Oh, bitte, Mother, bitte, come. Hey, what? They did it. Diane and Belle got married. What? Yeah, Jim Fellows just stopped by to tell us. He was there at the city hall and there was a fight. Diane and Jack. Married? Fight? Talk St. Oh, Paul. that's all I know, but I'm going after him and find out. Wait, I'll go with you. That guy on fighting and marrying that creature behind my back. Well, get ready, Ma. I got the buggy out in front. I could be driving downtown, but no matter. Just climb in, Ma. And hold tight. Yeah, of course. Bob, watch out. Wait. Who? Who there? Now what? The bomb. Look, fire. The bomb's on fire. Heaven help us. I left the lantern there. Get the baby. Yeah. I'll go after the cow. Ma, water, bucket, as many as you can. Come in, Warner. Have a drink. I was hoping you'd say that. Well, don't look so suspicious, boys. I'm here all alone, and I'm not out for trouble. You don't expect me to believe that, do you, Gil? After what I did to you? Oh, water over the dam. Someday you'll make it up to me, son. You're too smart not to. Sure, someday. Here. I heard you just got married, son. Where's the... Something else you may not know. Your brother just swore in 500 deputies. They'll be coming down here to run us out of the patch. Nobody's running me out of the patch. Well, I didn't think so, but you know what he said? He said he wouldn't leave a stick or stone standing here. Well, let them come. We'll be ready for That's them. That's it, Diane. Just went with Chicago, afraid of police. Yeah. Let Jack start it, then heaven help him. Uh, drink up, boys. It's on the house. Drink up. Yeah. Diane! Diane! Yeah? Fire! There's a big fire over on DeCoven Street. The whole street's gone. So he couldn't wait, could he? Burning us out. The mayor is burning us out. Yeah, he said he'd get us. Yeah, it'd take time to condemn the patch legally. He couldn't wait. Stay here, all of you. I'll be back in a little while. Wait a minute. You can't go after him alone. Get all the boys together here. I'll be back. 
The mayor's asked for a fight, and I'm going to see that he gets it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mighty funny business. What is? Oh, nothing. Except those O'Leary brothers have pulled some awful fancy tricks. And I wouldn't put it past them to do it again. Oh, you're crazy, Gil. You heard what Diane said. No one's going to burn him out, brother or no brother. Well, I hope not. But I'd like to be certain. Gil's right. We got something to say about this, all of us. Yeah. Now, listen to me. I say we can't wait until Dion gets back. We got to work fast. Now, clear out of here, all of you. Spread the word around. Get every man you can and meet at the armory. If Dion wants to help, that's fine. But Dion or no, we're going to get Jack O'Leary. <laughs> Diane came first to my hotel. I wouldn't see him. He stood outside my door shouting something about a fire and begged me to leave. His lies, I thought, were becoming more shabby. And then he said he couldn't wait. He had to get to the patch to find his mother. When he was gone, I went to the window. He hadn't lied. I could see the city hall. There were men on the roof pointing to the terrible red mass that was leaping closer and closer to the heart of the city. And among the men was Jack O'Leary. Patch is like tinder. There hasn't been a drop of rain in over two months. Well, we can't control it. There's too much wind. Look, it's jumping ahead, blocks at a time. Here's General Sheridan, Mayor. What do we do, General? There's only one thing we can do. Make a fire break at the edge of the patch. Blow out that entire section along Randolph Street. Fight the fire with dynamite, but fight it. Then mobilize the militia. Swear in all the deputies you need. Clear out the patch. Send the people north right down to the lake. Requisition all the food stuff they'll need. Donovan, Johnson, Muller. Right yeah, right here. Get to a telegraph. Call Milwaukee, St. Louis. We need every piece of fire apparatus they can send us. Wire Washington will need relief, maybe even federal troops. And keep me advised. Oh, where will you be, sir? Down at the patch with General Sheridan. Bob. Bob. Tired. Where's Ma? Gone to the north side. Trenchin and the baby are with her. They had to go. Our house was the first to burn. You crazy fool. Why did you let him do it? Do what? Jack started the fire. Jack hasn't been near here. The fire started in our barn. Cal must have kicked over the lantern. Bob, they'll kill him. They'll kill Jack. What are you talking about? Every gang in the patch, they all think Jack started the fire to burn us out. We've got to stop them. We've got to find him. Where is he? I don't know, but I know where that mob is. They're waiting for me. Come on. Hurry, you men. Get that dynamite tighter. Set the fuses. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Go back. All police lines back a full block. No one gets through here. Yes, sir. I want 20 men here, Corporal. Clear this street. Come on in. On the double. Let me through here. Let me through. Get back. We're going to dynamite. Dynamite? Fire break. Open up now. Back. Back, everybody. Let us through the lake. We've got to get to the lake. Diane. Gil Warner and his mob are somewhere around here. We've got to find them. Hey, look. There's Jack. 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 I told you to clear out. My brother, I've got to get to him. Hey, Jack. Bob, where's Bob? I don't know. Come here, quick. Gretchen, the baby. They left for the lake. Jack, listen, I've got to talk to you. I've taken all I'm going to from you. Get out of here. They're after you, Jack. They're going to kill you. We're dynamiting the patch, and nobody's going to stop us. Not you or anyone else. Jack, you don't understand. I understand he owns that cafe across the street. He'd do anything to save it. Phil Warner and his mob are out to get you. They all think you set the fire to wipe out the patch. It's my fault. I thought you did too, Jack. You've got to believe me. Hey, there they are. They're coming. Warner's gang. All right, let them come. I believe you, Dion. All that matters now is that we're together again and thinking alike. Let him come. Just like I told you, the old area. Man, listen. Listen. The fire was an accident. My brother had nothing to do with it. Down, stop it, Dion. We know different. In the street, we go to the side of the Get your men out of here, Warner. No. No, we're not moving there. We live here in the past. It's not all burned out yet. Then we're not going to let the dynamite. We're trying to save the city. Then save it. Touch off that dynamite, though, and you blow us up with it. We're not budging. They're all set, Mayor. Everybody's out of the area. Say the word. I'll send in the man to light the fuses. Hold them back, Jack. I'll light them myself. Oh, oh, yes, you got rocks, boys. Use them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Dion! Dion's hit. They've hit him. Anybody else want to light those fuses? That's exactly what I'm going to do, Warner. I'm with you, Jack. Close in here, men. Close in. It'll be one of you against ten of us, General. I'm warning you. Keep those troops away. Close in. Close in. Zion. Zion. He's unconscious. Get him out of here, Bob. Where are you going? Pick up where he left off. I'm lighting the fuses. He's lighting the dynamite, Gil. He's lighting the dynamite. Get him, Randall. Get him. Don't worry, Gil. All right, boys. Get in there and pull out those fuses. It's only the first charge, Warner. I'm not dead yet. Get back, boys. Get back. We're too late. Run! 
As I fought my way through the burning street and crashing timbers, I heard the explosion. I knew they meant the end of the patch, but I didn't know until later that they also meant the end of Jack O'Leary. The panic was on now. A panic of screaming, fighting humanity, struggling insanely against the inferno, and themselves in a frantic surge toward the safety of Lake Michigan. I was carried along like a leaf in a mill stream. And then I fell. As I got up, I saw her lying under the wreckage of the fallen wall. No, girl. No. Go on. Go on, stay no, still. Mrs. O'Leary, please, you must try. Lean on me, we'll make it. It's my leg. I... Oh, no. It's you. Give me your arm. Hurry. I'll not be all my life to you. I won't leave you. You would die on you. Yes. Yes, it was the only way he could save the pet, so he married me. He loves you. You turned him against his own people. He doesn't love me. Please, we must get out of here. No, I can't. I'm done for. Get away while you can. You're his mother. I won't leave you. I can't. I'll get help. Someone will help us. Someone. You go, go. Diane. Diane, any, any word of them? No, not a trace. Ma nor Bell. I've been all over the North Shore. Gretchen and the baby are still in the tent. Stay with them. I'll look. No, I'll try the South Shore. Diane, look. Bell. It's Bell and Ma. They're alive. They're safe. Ma! Oh, Dad. Oh, it will be brave. Bell. Oh, my darling. And Ma. Oh, she's and bandits. But we're living. Diane. Oh, Diane. And the others. Where are they? Where? Gretchen and the baby. They're all right, Ma. And Jack. Ma, he healed. He's dead. Yes. You made it up with him. Sure, Ma. I made it up with him. Then I'll not be weeping. There's a living that need looking after. Go to your wife, boy. Go to my daughter. Don't stand there gawking at me. It's she who loves you, Diane. And in her love for you, save me. Belle. It's gone, Diane. The whole city. Jack's gone with it. But what he stood for will never die. It was a city of wood, and now it's ashes. But out of the fire will be coming steel. We'll live to see it, and, and our children will see it. And he'll have his dreams. Nothing can stop this city now any more than it could stop him. Yes. The O'Leary's are a strange tribe. What they set out to do, they finished. I know. I'm one of them. Before our stars return for a curtain call, here's Libby Collins, and looking very thoughtful. You know, I was wondering, John, were you a brunette when you were a baby? Gosh, I don't know. But my relatives insist I was the reddest thing they ever saw. <laughs> That's just it. Most babies aren't really beautiful when they're tiny, so they need a little showmanship to set them off. How do you mean? Oh, by sticking to becoming colors, just as smart grown-ups do. Now, pink, for instance, can make a red-faced baby look even redder. Well, what would you suggest for the crib and creeper set? Flattering pastels. Canary yellow is lovely for a dark-haired darling. Light, light blue sets off a blonde. And a redhead would be irresistible in sea green. Always pastels, of course. Strong soaps could easily ruin those delicate colors. It'd be a shame to spoil dainty baby dresses and sweaters with harsh treatment like strong soap and hot water. And that goes for blankets and washable bassinet trimmings, too. All those pretty color things need gentle luck care to keep the colors lovely longer. Don't babies still wear lots of white, too? Mm-hmm. Shirts and diapers need luck care, too, so they'll stay soft and comfy. Then if you've got a baby at your house... You ought to have a big box of Lux Flakes there. Lux is safe for little woolies and pretty dresses alike. And so thrifty, you'll want to use it for all baby things. And now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. Our stars, Dorothy Lamour, Robert Young, and John Hodiak, come to the footlights for their curtain calls. And all three of you deserve a bouquet for tonight's performance. Thank you, C.B. There's only one thing that bothers me about tonight's play, C.B. What's that, Bob? 
Well, I understood that Mrs. O'Leary's cow was just a myth. Well, you wouldn't expect the cow to be a myth, sir, would you? Oh. <laughs> oh, John, John. I mean, that business about the cow kicking over the lantern, that's an exploded theory. It certainly exploded with a bang. So did that gag. Yeah. <laughs> you mean, Bob, that the cow's a lot of bull? You too? Well, if, if, if you're going to cross off Mrs. O'Leary's cow, who did start that fire, Bob? Well, don't look at me. Well, maybe they rubbed two Boy Scouts together. <laughs> what's, your, what's your theory about the fire, Daddy? Well, all I know about fires is the one I had in my dressing room the other day. The firemen were there six hours. Six hours to put out a fire in your dressing room? No. One hour to put out the fire. Five hours to put out the firemen. <laughs> Speaking of dressing rooms, Daddy, I understand Paramount has just released your new Technicolor picture, Rainbow Island. That's right, CB. But a more important bit of news right now is what you're going to have for your 10th anniversary next Monday night. Yes, what did you pick for next week, CB? Well, Bob, as you know, I didn't do the picking myself. Thousands of listeners sent us their suggestions from all parts of the country. From those suggestions, we're going to pick many plays and stars for our 10th anniversary season. And the one we have for Monday night is especially appropriate. It's the first play ever presented on the Lux Radio Theater, a drama that has touched the hearts of millions of our listeners. Seventh Heaven. With two stars requested so often in your letters, Jennifer Jones and Van Johnson. <laughs> One of the great love stories of all time. Seventh Heaven is laid in wartime Paris, a city that once again symbolizes hope and love and freedom to all the peoples of the earth. Sounds like a wonderful birthday present, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You certainly kept the home fires burning tonight. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Van Johnson, Jennifer Jones, and Jean Hirschholz in Seventh Heaven with Billy Gilbert. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. And now a reminder from Uncle Sam. Christmas packages for overseas must be mailed this week before October 15th to ensure delivery by Christmas Day. Be sure to wrap securely and address cleanly. Robert Young appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and is currently appearing in the Canterville Ghost. John Hodiak will soon be seen in Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's Marriage is a Private Affair. Heard in tonight's play were Cy Kendall as Warner, Janet Scott as Molly, Ruby Dandridge as Hattie, and Tom Holland as Bob. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Seventh Heaven with Jennifer Jones, Van Johnson, Jean Herschel, and Billy Gilbert. Fry. Grand for cake and pie. Fry. Every time you fry. Fry. It's the shortening buy. Yes, ma'am. New spry cakes are lighter, better tasting. Fry pastry is so tender and flaky. Fry fried foods are crispier, so digestible. So be a better cook. Bake and fry with fry. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Seventh Heaven with Van Johnson, Jennifer Jones, Jean Hershold, and Billy Gilbert. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.